Hello and welcome to an Ancient Craft Project update. These little updates are where you get a sort of behind the scenes view into some of the things that we've been working on and uh, I couldn't resist talking about uh, this particular project because it's a very exciting one, although many of them are exciting but this one's especially exciting. Many of you will know that uh, I like my stone tools and make lots of them for orders, uh, but I do an awful lot of bronze casting and copper casting as well. This is a bronze casting project based on an object from the late Bronze Age, and that particular object is a sword. I've cast lots of swords before, but this particular project has a, a special flair, I suppose, because I've been lucky enough to have on loan a real Bronze Age sword that was found in Utoxeter uh, in a quarry by uh, some of the uh, quarry workmen who noticed this particular object and realized it was of archeological significance. It then went to Archaeology Solutions who have loaned it to me to produce some replicas. So I'll show you the original, hence why I have these fancy gloves on to protect the object. Very carefully show you. Here we go. Here is the sword itself and as I'm sure you can see it is in rather good condition. For any of you that uh, are used to seeing Bronze Age metalwork it, it's usually a sort of greeny grey colour from where it's oxidised on the surface and being in the ground whereas this still has much of the original bronze colour uh, so it's, it is in really really good condition. There's a little bit of pitting on the surface uh, and it, the blade itself is a little bit bent and there's some damage on the blade. This is possibly where it was intentionally damaged in the Bronze Age, uh, which was very common for people to either um, smash sword blades against hard edges or completely bend the sword over uh, before depositing it in a watery place. And it's thought that this original uh, came from a paleo channel that was dug through in the quarry uh, and in the uh, spoil this came out. This particular kind of sword would be classed as a Ewart Park sword, and Ewart Park swords are perhaps the most common type of sword from the late Bronze Age in Britain. Uh, it has this, what's sometimes called leaf-shaped blade. It's not the only kind of late Bronze Age sword to have a leaf blade, uh, but it's the hilt and handle that usually sets Ewart Park swords apart from Wilburton swords and others. You can see it has this sort of triangular diamond shape uh, hilt area uh, with the rivets for the handle that I'll show you shortly. Fairly short handle and this sort of flaring fork uh, which is where the pommel would attach. Now this example has only got uh, six rivet holes but uh, some have more. Uh, it's not the uh, one way of uh, putting a sword handle together with two wooden plates that would have been riveted with a pommel that would have fitted onto uh, a wooden peg and held in place uh, often just purely by uh, friction and uh, just a very tight fit with the wood. So there's not a great deal that uh, I can tell you more uh, about this particular find simply because it was well out of context. Um, the blade has been work hardened as you may be able to tell by the little flare and uh, lines along the blade itself. That's just to harden the bronze itself so that uh, it will be able to cut and not be damaged quite so much. But bronze is not as good as steel uh, and usually once a bronze sword is bent and it's been bashed over a hard edge it, it stays bent um, which is uh, the downside over something like iron or steel. Uh, it's likely that this sword uh, has the what's known as weapons grade bronze ratio of around 90% tin, 10% 90% uh, tin, 90% copper, 10% tin, 90% copper sword, I'm really messing it up, 90% tin sword would be interesting, um, but uh, it's uh, likely to be 90% copper. Where that copper came from, often very difficult to tell, it's likely it was made up of a number of objects that have been recycled uh, and put into this. Some copper may have come from the Alps, uh, which was quite common in the late Bronze Age. The tin almost certainly came from Cornwall or Devon, but uh, it's quite tricky to tell if it's been mixed in with other elements and alloys. 
Um, but uh, in terms of its classification within Ewart Parker, I've had a little look through the Swords of Britain, which is a fantastic book for classifying these, and it, it could fit into a whole number. Um, and uh, I'll show you a picture of them very shortly. But for me to make a replica of this, because of its pitted surface, which you can perhaps see a little more clearly on the other side, particularly along this area, I would have to make it slightly thicker as it has lost some of its original surface. Um, it only weighs uh, just under 700 grams, so it's not hugely heavy, and, and most Bronze Age swords should be less than a kilo, which is what I always aim for. So I'll pop this particularly uh, stunning example down and uh, refer to uh, this fantastic book, Swords of Britain, and show you some of the examples that it might fit into, and you can perhaps see there some of the uh, full pictures of swords that are very similar to it. Uh, now the downside of uh, the classification of these swords is that uh, although you get eastern, southeastern, western, you can find for example a northern or Caledonian style sword in southern Britain. We've supposedly got a uh, a Caledonian style Ewart Park sword that was found near Royston. So is it regional production? We don't know. So I suppose I should show you what I've made with uh, the original. I've made two replicas with a uh, handle and pommel so far, and this is one of them. Uh, and this is possibly what it might have looked like uh, before it was deposited into the ground. So you can see the full blade similar to the original and this is perhaps the missing bit that uh, it's sometimes harder to imagine the actual handle so I've chosen oak handle plates and uh, a nice ash pommel which you can hopefully see the nice wood grain on it um, with copper alloy rivets that's been beeswaxed um, but uh, yeah it's uh, I'm pretty pleased with the uh, results of the first attempt it's pretty comfortable to hold uh, either with a full hammer grip or finger over grip. It's a, a pretty, pretty comfortable sword to hold uh, with a triangular pommel. Uh, a few of these original swords have been found with the wooden handle, uh, either in full or fragments, and some originals exist with a full bronze handle, cast as one solid piece of bronze, bronze handle, bronze pommel, would have been rather heavy. Um, but uh, this example is, I suppose, a more classic uh, wooden handle uh, design. So yeah, that's uh, the update on that particular sword project. Um, and uh, the plan is to make a pair of those replicas uh, to go to the finder and the landowner, and I'll probably make a few more after that. But uh, that, that's all for now, and uh, tune in next time for another update.